right, 210.8, GFCI protection for personnel. This is a big one. Anytime we talk about 210.8, you need to be paying very close attention, especially in 2017. I've been teaching code changes since 2002, and I don't think I've seen a bigger code change in 210.8 than we're going to see this year. All right, here's what it is. New locations for GFCI protection are added, and clarifications were made to help in uniform enforcement. I think you're really going to like what they did here. All right. When it comes to GFCIs, we've added new requirements every single code edition since 1971. They first came into the code in 1971, and we have added GFCI rules in every single code edition ever since. So let's get into the kind of the main rule here, 210.8. GFCI protection must be provided as required in 210.8A through E. The GFCI device must be located in a readily accessible location. Now, people are getting confused on this issue. The test and reset button has to be readily accessible. All right, now, if you go to uh, Article 100 and you look up the definition under accessible, comma, readily, readily accessible means that it's capable of being reached quickly without requiring a person to climb over or under an obstacle, without having to use a portable ladder, or without having to use tools. Right? So you got to be able to just walk up to it, push the test button, push the reset button. Here's where everybody's getting thrown off. If you have an outlet that's not readily accessible, that doesn't mean it doesn't need GFCI protection. Right? You could have an outlet, if, if we're in a bathroom, you could have the outlet up in the ceiling. You couldn't have the test and reset button in the ceiling, but that receptacle is still in the bathroom, so it still has to be GFCI protected. The fact that the receptacle is not readily accessible does not change the GFCI rule. It simply says that the test and reset button have to be readily accessible. All right, let's get into the rules. Now, the first thing, we added a note here in 2017. This is informational note number two. It says, listen, take a look at 422.5A because it also contains GFCI rules for appliances. 210.8 is not the only place in the code book that has GFCI rules. We have rules for swimming pools in 680. We have rules for elevators in Article 620. We have rules for appliances in Article 422. Now, they did something in the 2017 where they lumped all the GFCI rules for appliances all together in 422.5, which I think was a great thing. And we added this note to let code users know that, listen, if you want to know where the rules are, oh, I thought the code said you had a GFCI protect your drinking fountains and uh, your, you know, what other kind of appliances you have, uh, vacuum, vacuums for, for automation. Where is that in the code? Well, it's not in 210.8. It's in 422.5. So we're adding an informational note just to let people know to take a look there because this is not the only location where we have GFCI rules. Now, this is a new change. 210.8. I absolutely love what they did here. They've needed to do this for so long and they did a fantastic job, but it's, it's, it's a little bit strange. When measuring distances for GFCI protection, the distance is the shortest path that a cord would take without piercing a floor, wall, ceiling, or fixed barrier, and without passing through a door doorway or window because, you know, cords can't go in walls, right, as we know, so you're not going to measure it through a wall. The code has never told us how to measure. There are certain rules that have a measurement. So sinks, for example. You're going to see a rule here in a second that says, listen, you have to have GFCI protection within six feet of a sink. Okay, great. Well, what does that mean? Like six feet above the sink? What, what, if, I have, what if I have a sink and on the other side of the wall, not even in the same room, on the other side of the wall, I have a receptacle? Is that within six feet of the sink? Well, I mean, geez, I, I guess if you, if you read it literally, I guess that is within six feet of the sink, but not anymore, not for the purposes of this rule, because now we're not measuring it just like as an all-encompassing, you know, uh, radius around the sink. It's the shortest path that a cord would take. So take a look here at the graphic. If you can plug in to any of these receptacles with a six-foot cord and touch the sink, then it requires GFCI protection. The exception to this, and this is, this is interesting, I'm, I'm not positive that this is what Code Making Panel 2 intended, but take a look at the one underneath the sink, the receptacle. If I plug into that receptacle, I could take my cord, right, six-foot cord, 
I could take it around the cabinet and put it into the sink. So one would think that that would require GFCI protection. Well, not so fast. It went through a door, right? Yeah, it's a cabinet door. It's not a, it's not a typical doorway that, that a person would walk through, but the code doesn't say that. The code says passing through a door or a doorway or a window. So if it has to pass through a cabinet door, that gets rid of the GFCI protection requirements. So it's kind of interesting. Sometimes we do this. In, in 2011, the receptacle underneath this sink probably didn't need GFCI protection. In 2014, it absolutely needed GFCI protection. In 2017, it no longer needs GFCI protection. So it, it's kind of tough. Let's look at the receptacle in the middle, off to the, to the right of the cabinets, right? I'm guessing that they're going to put a trash compactor in there. Now, that receptacle is not going to be readily accessible, but it is still within six feet of the sink, so a GFCI protection would be required, right? Because that cord, even if it's a trash compactor in front of it, that cord is not piercing a floor, wall, ceiling, or a fixed barrier, and it's not passing through a door, doorway, or a window. Now move over one more receptacle to the right. I'm guessing that may be for a, uh, for a dishwasher. If the dishwasher is screwed to the cabinet, then that becomes a fixed barrier, doesn't it? It's, it's fixed in place. That receptacle would not require GFCI protection because now the cord would have to pass through a fixed barrier and that gets rid of the measurement. So I love what they did here. It's going to remove arguments, but it's probably likely to start some arguments as well. So when it comes to this, it, it's a tough thing. It, it's, yeah, it's black and white, but there's maybe still some room for interpretation. As always, when that's the case, Somebody has to make the decision on what it means, and that person's going to be the inspector. So ask your authority having jurisdiction, hey, do you think that requires GFCI protection? Are you going to consider that dishwasher a fixed barrier, right? Are you going to consider the cabinet door a door? I think it is. Most of the people that I talk to think it is.